Once you've opened the door of 35 millimeter film photography, and considering go bigger, once you want to enter the holy world of medium format, but on a budget, once you watch some YouTuber can't stop talking about their new 6x6 medium format camera and think. Only if I could try it. Oh, you wait no more, ladies and gentlemen. Today I brought you the 6x6 Seagull 4B TLR Media Format Camera. This is a media format film camera that takes both 6x5 and 6x6 format photos with a fixed lens of 75 mm f3.5 lens. And this only cost fifty dollars. I can't. <laughs> this is so. <laughs> And this only cost fifty dollars. Hey guys, this is Sam. Welcome back to another episode of Photography is So Cheap. That's right, I said it. <laughs> As we all know, photography is not a cheap hobby. To get into film photography is definitely not cheap, considering how expensive. Film art nowadays, and plus developing and scanning, and not even counting printing yet. But film cameras are relatively cheaper than digital cameras. For example, I bought this guy for fifty dollars. But does cheap film camera worth buying and trying out? Today we're gonna find out. As usual, I will talk about how to use this camera step by step, how to load it and unload it, as if this is your first media format film camera. If you are experienced or if you already shot with this camera, you can find the timestamp and skip all of this and jump to test shoot to see some sample photos. And then I will also be talking about what I like and not like about this camera in the end. The name of the camera is pronounced Hai O, which is Seagull. Seagull is made by one of the oldest camera company in Shanghai, China, since 1960s. As TLR goes, they made two models of this camera: the 4A and the 4B. The 4A is a little more advanced model than the 4B, but this one I have is the basic 4B model. TLR stands for Twin Lens Reflex. As you can see, there are two lenses at the front. The lower one is for taking the shot, and the higher and the smaller one is for viewing the image. They are the same focal lens. There are many brands and models as TLR camera goes. The famous one being the famous Rolleiflex. This is my first time using a TLR. If I like this camera enough, should we consider getting a Rolly? Don't get any ideas. Don't get any ideas, Sam. <laughs> this is a fully mechanical camera. Means there's no battery, no internal light meter, no auto focus or winding or all of that. Um, the design of this camera is very simple and very stripped down. To start with this camera, let's first load up a film. This camera takes medium format film. Look at the bottom. Rotate the ring to open and close the film chamber. O stands for open, and C stands for close. Or you can just learn your Chinese and read Kai and Guan, Kai Guan, Kai Guan. <laughs> you want to put your film at the bottom take up spool. There are two knobs on the side. Pull the knob out so you can secure the roll in place. Remember, the black side of the film paper facing the lens. Stick the end of the paper into the take-up spool. On the other side of the camera, rotate the black knob to advance the film. Keep going until you see the starting line at the corner. Then close the back. Make sure you rotate the ring to close and lock the film chamber properly. The interesting thing about this camera is it can take both 6.45 and 6.6 format. After you close your film chamber, there are two windows on the back. One shows 12, one shows 16. Before you load the film, you need to decide which format you want to shoot because. 
there is a ouch. Ow. <laughs> there is a dropping mat like this. It will cut down the six by six format down to six four five format, so you can take sixteen shot instead of twelve shot for the six by six format. The first test row I took, I left the mat in and shot six four five format. After closing the locked the film chamber to start shooting, keep winding this knob until you see. The number one showing up in one of these red window. This is a waist level viewfinder, just like the Hasselblad 501C I have. You lift this viewfinder window on the top of the camera, then you can see your frame in here. If you're shooting the six by six format, the whole view window is your frame. If you're shooting six four five, make sure to keep your frame inside of this two guideline. Can you even see these two guidelines? It's a little dark here. On the back of the viewfinder, you see this tiny little knob here. You press it down. It will pull up the magnifier. This will help you with focusing. And to put it away, you just simply tap and lock it back into place. Another interesting thing about this camera is there is another way to frame your shot. You see, there is a tiny little window back here. You see, there's a small square window at the back, and then you can push the front piece up. This side. And then you hold this camera up to your eye, and you can look through the square window. What you're looking at will be your six by six format. But you have to put it up against your eye for the frame to be accurate, like this. All right, you guys try it. <sighs> and just like other waist level viewfinder, when you look down to the frame. The shot is horizontally flipped. This might be difficult to get used to at the beginning, but with this back viewfinder right here, you might shoot it just like other SLR. Pretty much all the control you have of this camera is at the front. It's very simple and straightforward. On the bottom lens, you have your shutter and your aperture. Hold this two lever up and down to set your shutter and the aperture. Then push the shutter lever down. Then turn the focus knob to focus, and then press the shutter button to take the shot. Every time you took a shot, you need to reclock the shutter, and then you rotate this winding knob to advance your film. Open this red window here. Keep rolling until you see the next number showing up. When the whole row is done, just keep rotating this advancing knob until the whole row is rolled up to this take-up spool, and then you can open the back and take your film out. All right, let's look at some pictures. This is the first roll I took on this camera to see if the camera is even working properly. The first thing I noticed and not a big fan of is how dark the viewfinder is, especially indoor. It's very difficult to see. Outdoor works a little better, but I have pretty bad eyesight, so I have to use the magnifier pretty much for every single shot. And this is the only vertical shot I took. It's really hard to frame this way. 
The pictures are actually turned out better than I expected. The corners are not as sharp, and when we hit backlight, it can look a little soft and muddy. But overall, I think they look pretty decent. Sixty. F four. Secondly, since I only shot two rolls on this camera, I haven't really built a muscle memory of take the shot, advance the film, and then meter the light, adjust the aperture and shutter, and then pull the film lever. The whole rhythm. What I'm trying to say is, I take a shot now, and then a few days later, when I pick up this camera again, I often forgot if I already advanced the film. Or not. Most of the camera I've used before have some sort of protection. If you already took the shot, you cannot take another shot without advancing the film. Or、uh, if you haven't taken the shot, you can't accidentally skip a roll. This camera doesn't have that kind of protection. I only got 15 shot out of this rope, so I accidentally double exposed one frame. It kind of looked cool. And the one last thing I don't quite like about this camera is the advancing knob. You have to pay attention to the number to not over roll the frame. There is no stop. That means every time you take a shot, you need to look at the back of the camera, carefully roll it up to the next frame. On the first roll of film, I end up having a bunch of uneven gaps in between shots. If you don't be careful, you may overlap the shot or over roll the frame and don't get enough shots on one roll. But I mean, like I said in the very beginning of this video. This is a very cheap, very stripped-down camera. I can just forgive everything I just said that I not like about this camera for how cheap it is. I mean, for fifty dollars, what more can you ask? But that being said, for a fifty-dollar camera, there are a few things I do like about it. All right, we are going to meet up with my friend Ali, and、uh, we're gonna test out some portraits with this camera. <laughs> All right, this is our model today, Ali, and、uh, today's weather is a little poopy too. <laughs> know, it's so cold, <laughs> and it's <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Because this is a vintage camera, so I went with the vintage look for the model. Actually, let's have you sit at the other one, the other one right there. So the first shot would be f four at one twenty five. The lens on this camera is a 70 millimeter 3.5 fixed lens. You cannot change lens on this camera, and that means I don't have to overthink what kind of focal lens I want to bring with me today. Just the end, the other one. Yeah, and just lean, just lean against the pole. The third shot is the same, but I'm gonna overexpose a little bit. I'm gonna shoot it at 60. And second of all, this camera is fairly lightweighted compared to my other medium format film camera. Since it is a TLR, that means there's no mirror inside the camera moving up and down. That's not only reduce the weight, that also reduce the camera shakiness when you take the shot. And also, the viewfinder won't go black after taking the shot. Due to this reason and the very quiet shutter sound, the feeling of taking the shot feels very different compared to my other film camera. This shutter sound is driving me insane because it's so quiet. It's like, kada, kada. All right, let's have you keep going that way. 
go, 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 go. All right, right here, right here, stop. Yeah, right here. A lot of the time I wondered, did the shot just happen? It's okay, let's go, let's go. There's a security. We just walk by and then we got kicked out. <laughs> but we got the shot. We got two shots. The whole TLR mechanic makes this a very quiet camera. I haven't done any street photo with this camera yet, but I can't imagine this will be a good street photography camera for the waist level viewfinder and the super quiet shutter sound. Put your hand on your leg. Both hands, both hands. Yeah, and looking that way, look in front. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I like that. And the last shot I just took, I used the back window to frame the shot. I think the frame turned out pretty accurate. Do that one more time. Yeah, and chin up just a little bit. Chin up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. I really like this shot. Should have taken more medium and close-up shots. The bokeh has this swirly effect. It looks very interesting. All right, so the shot is a little bit dark. It's a 15th of a second at f4. Um, probably gonna have to use my tripod. All right, that was our last shot. We're done. Now I'm gonna roll it out. The things I like about this camera are the features all TLR cameras share, but there's one specific thing I like about this camera is the option to shoot both 645 and 66 format. That's just like putting my Pentax 645 and Hasselblad 501C together into one camera. How awesome is that? Obviously not the same, not picture quality wise. I taped the back of the camera because this camera is so old and I was worried about light leak. You probably don't want to use gaffer tape. <laughs> I only have gaffer tape at home. Uh, so yeah. Since we're testing a 6x6 camera, I thought, why not shoot another roll with my Hasselblad? Since they shoot the same format. Um, the plan was to shoot Two roll of Portra, not Portra, two roll of Cine Steel 800. But by the time I'm leaving, I realize I only have one roll left. <laughs> so to keep the consistency, uh, we're gonna shoot Portra. I had some bad experience with this camera recently. I had a difficult time focusing at wide open aperture in low light situation. So I haven't really used this for a while. Tutorial because I haven't shot with this for a while. And I accidentally overrode the first frame. Yep, I remember. I remember how to use this. <laughs> we found this really cute ice cream shop in Pasadena and uh, they kindly gave me permission to take photos there. I really like how the first shot turned out. Some of you guys left me comments recommended me using a monopod for the Hasselblad and I tried it this time. It really helped me with framing, especially focusing. There's one car parked behind. The car behind her really bothered me, but we were losing light. I couldn't wait much longer. Maybe I should just go and ask for them to just pull up a little bit. Oh well. Oh yeah, I like that. That's cute. This is actually a pretty cool shot. If I do everything right, it will turn out nicely, I feel like. 
Ah, I wish my angle was a little lower and I didn't catch the red tail light that was passing by in the background. But still a cool shot. <laughs> <laughs> we came here, we drove by, we drove past by the tree and I saw this tree look pretty nice. But this tree actually doesn't work quite well. Um, luckily I brought this. All right, look that way a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. I kind of want to add a little bit of dramatic lighting, so I dropped the one tiny light brick over here. All right, let's see. All right, that was our last shot. I'm super excited, super looking forward to see how this turned out. Alright, so today we shot two rows, one on the Seagull 4B and one on the Hasselblad 51, 501C. Um, it's illegal to compare this two. <laughs> one costs like $50, one costs $1,000. Alright, anyway, this is a really fun test for how simple and cheap this camera is. I think it's pretty good for its price. You can definitely learn the basic of photography with this camera. But since I already have other media format camera that produce better image quality, I don't think I'm ever gonna use this camera like ever again. Again, it's still a cool camera. It will sit on my shelf, I think. Or should I just sell it and get a better TLR like the Rolly Flags, you say? All right, this video is long enough. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, press that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. This is Sam. I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> This guy. Oh, why? This just doesn't feel right. This just doesn't feel. With a fixed 75, 30, 50 dollars. You buy not eat, you buy not go down. Go, 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 Oh, and the, and the, it's it's not my birthday. <laughs>